So welcome again to another edition of the Lightning Process London podcast uh, with me, your host Phil Parker, and over there, uh, Kate. Say hi, Kate. Hi, everybody. <laughs> um, we were just chatting um, before we, we started rolling uh, the recording about what we would cover today and what we'd like to do is think about, well, um, what's shown up in the last few weeks working with clients or in our lives we think something might be useful to share and Kate raised the um, interesting issue do you want to talk about it Kate what, what's been showing up yeah I've really noticed that um, when I've been supporting clients people have been struggling with prioritizing themselves um, and so I've been talking and exploring with them why this might have happened um, and why it's difficult to prioritise themselves. And so I thought it'd be interesting just to talk about the reasons, what you can do about it, where you can go for, for extra help, depending on the reasons. Um, and I was, I was just um, telling Phil about the fact that I found after Christmas that I didn't have one pair, of, I had, all my socks had holes in. <laughs> and, um, and so I made it a priority to actually buy some socks. And I realised what was happening is I... I just didn't have an awareness that I wasn't prioritising myself, and so it was as simple as that um, for me. So I'm assuming that everybody else had had uh, socks without holes in, but yes. not you. <laughs> yeah, dinosaurs on, <laughs> and it was just me. It was just me because it had never been a priority. Um, but now, and especially you know, now my feet are really nice and warm. It's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and I think the other thing to look at is the uh, the consequence to our health of of not doing that. Um, there is some discussion that actually not taking care of yourself not just you know not eating properly or not exercising enough you know which is significant but just generally pushing yourself down the ranks of priority to, to often not even showing up is not very conducive to health and of course one of the, the biggest groups that you find this in is mums um, yeah. because you know there are so many things that are really essential that need to be done um, you know, usually for the little ones, the little kids, and then there's no time left. You know, so it's not that it, they don't have themselves on their agenda uh, or on their to-do list. It's just that all all sorts of other things take all twenty-four hours of the day, and then it's a new day, and the same thing happens again. So, talking yeah. to your clients, what did you discover? What were the key things that were causing it? Uh, what were the consequences of it? One of them, as like you said, is is being a mum. Mm. Uh, having children to look after and having other priorities and, and just not having the time in the day. I also interestingly found that there are certain people who are too busy, who, who don't have enough time because actually they're busy being busy, which is quite interesting, isn't it? Mm. So actually that can take up energy, that can take up time, just being busy. Um, often for people, um, it can be around them not feeling worthy. So it can be around self-esteem as well, um, learning from childhood how to be a good girl or a good boy is often around putting other people first, so not not, pri not prioritising themselves or that being seen as selfish mm -hmm. uh, and having lots and lots of negative connotations, but as, as you've just said, we know that actually it's incredibly important. Mm. I think the, and I think the selfish thing is interesting, that very often people have this um, kind of idea in the head either you're somebody who is uh, thinking about others or you're selfish and those are your two op only two options right so yeah. if you don't if you think about yourself that means you're selfish and yeah. if you uh, are thinking about others it means you're a, a good person and those things that's not the only two uh, positions that it can be in we can be kind and thoughtful of others and take care of ourselves at the same time um, yeah. one, and one of the things I, I often talk about is this idea that this is a learned behaviour, this whole idea that uh, we have to put other people first. Uh, and the reason we can see this, again going back to kids, is if, you, uh, if you've ever met a two month old kid, uh, when they wake up in the middle of the night and they want something, they don't kind of look at their watch and go, it's a little bit early to be, you know, demanding things of other people and after all my needs are not as important as anyone else that's not what happens when you're two months old you just scream if you want something and if it isn't what you want you scream again so we clearly yeah. come in with a sense of entitlement for at least you know some some good stuff coming towards us uh, and yeah okay we have to balance that as we move from being a child where we, we probably are more you know demanding of other people than than we should be as adults I think that's true but quite often we 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 switch so far down that as you say these, these ideas of being selfish or being self-centered or being yeah. arrogant 
and uh, Robert Holden I was talking about this yesterday is a friend of mine who wrote this book called Lovability and one of the things he says is when he was a kid at school you know like a 12 year old or something said the worst thing that anyone could ever say to you was oh my god you really love yourself don't you and that was like that was a dreadful <laughs> thing to hear I remember that <laughs> yeah uh, but actually loving yourself doesn't mean uh, being arrogant, selfish, you know, uh, narcissistic, although there are certain people in the world at the moment <laughs> who may yeah, fall yeah. into that category. Uh, genuinely loving yourself means being nice to yourself and it doesn't preclude yeah. you being nice to other people at the same time. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. And I've got, um, so some people who are listening or watching this may know, I've got two-year-old twins and I have bought some books about feelings and I wrote um, the Lightning Process blog about this this week. Um, and one of the books that I've bought talks about um, how in order to be happy, you need to fill other people's happiness buckets up. But nowhere within this story, it's a story for children, nowhere within this book does it ever talk about them having a happiness bucket themselves or them looking after themselves. And and I, I mean, it was as if it was written 40 years ago and mm. it wasn't, it was only written 10 years ago. And I'm going to send it back. <laughs> the whole concept. I mean, you know, we we ca I just think we we just should not be advocating that to mm. our to our children. Um, you know, but I remember being at school and people saying as an insult, "You really love yourself." I remember that. Mm. How it's thought about years. Yeah, but I don't know. If, I don't know if they still do that, yeah. but I, it certainly was a, a you know yeah. one of the worst things that could be levelled at you. And actually, loving yourself is is really important. You know, being nice to yourself being kind to yourself and in, in, uh, in Buddhist uh, philosophy and also Christian philosophy in Buddhist philosophy they talk about uh, this process called loving kindness a meditation where uh, the idea is to focus on loving kindness and to then live a life where you're kind and uh, the first step of it is uh, being kind to yourself and the second step is then being kind to people you like and then the third step is being kind to people that you you know you don't particularly have a relationship with like the news agent or you know the milkman uh, and then the, the fourth step is being kind to people you don't like being kind to your enemies and then the fifth, the fifth step is being kind to everyone uh, but it starts interestingly with being kind to yourself and of course Christian Christian philosophy you know Jesus says um, out of all the commandments two are most important first of all is uh, love God above all others and secondly is love thy neighbour as thyself which is normally meant taken to mean be kind to others you know do as you would be done by kind of thing but also if you look at it more carefully it says tr uh, treat your neighbor as you would like to, to have yourself be treated be kind, you know be kind to your neighbor and that doesn't that doesn't mean be nasty to your neighbor and, and so you can be nasty to yourself it means be kind to your neighbor and be kind to yourself at the same time yeah, it doesn't mean be kind to your neighbor at the exclusion of yeah, being kind. it doesn't say that it doesn't say that at all um, and, and so even implicit within Christian philosophy is the same thing and if you look at most world religions they do say be nice be nice to others and be nice to yourself because of course in you know in, in that religious connotation we are aspects of the divine and therefore we should be treated with with kindness and uh, and care and and too much of the time we don't and as we often say there's a massive link between happiness and health you know the research latest research from Diner and Chan in 2011 says it'll cost us about 10 years of life if we're not happy mm. yeah, which is much the same as smoking so as I often say never be a grumpy smoker is the worst <laughs> it's the worst of all <laughs> all worlds but uh, one of the key things to being happy is to be happy with yourself you know this happiness bucket thing you're talking about making other people happy yeah that's kind of okay but you can't have your happiness just be because other people are happy around you then your happiness is dependent on other people's moods and this is yeah. what we would call codependency where your feelings are dependent on somebody else's and this is often at the, the back of this uh, if I make everybody okay then I can feel okay myself it never works yeah. out never I would say, and also that, that level of responsibility because you cannot be responsible for yeah. other people's happiness you know you can support and love and nurture but if you take on other people's happiness as your responsibility, it just becomes such a futile task, yeah, isn't it? It's, it's, it's impossible to do, and it's absolutely overwhelming. You, and exhausting. Yeah. And as we say, you know, trying to change another person is like trying to change the weather. I was just doing, as I said to you, I've 
taught eight days out of the last 16. And a lot of this has come up time and time again. You know, we spend a lot of our time trying to change other people. If only my husband would take the trash out. If only my kids would be nicer. If only my, you know, always looking towards the outside. Somebody's doing something they shouldn't be doing, which is probably true. But it's futile, as you say, to try and change them. It's not, not the solution. The solution is to look at yourself, look at your own stuff. Yeah. And, and to make yourself important enough. Um, I was talking to somebody this morning. I was doing a, a coaching call this morning with somebody um, looking at kind of what, what core beliefs would be really useful about yourself. And, and I'm not worthy is not it's not good enough you know it needs it needs to be bigger it needs to be something that's really amazing something that can be as powerful as people's inner critic can be so that it counteracts that so um you know if i mean we started off talking about prioritizing didn't we we've obviously kind of evolved the, evolved the call but you know if one of the reasons that you're not looking after yourself is that you don't feel worthy enough look at how you can change that and there's loads of resources available there's loads of free resources on the lightning process work.com and .co.uk website you've done some fantastic downloads that can really help to build people's self-esteem if you know the lightning process you can go back to your practitioner or use the process in the way that you've been taught there's so many different tools different techniques and different support out there to help you to do that and i kind of think if not now then when really mm -hmm. Well, yes, yesterday on this course, we were talking, um, we did a, did a live feed on Facebook. So if you check out my Facebook page, you'll see it. You can watch a bit of the seminar. We were talking about coaching and, you know, what makes a great coach, you know, and, and one of the ways to think about it is who in your life has been a great coach or who in your life should have been a great coach and wasn't. But then we took the conversation slightly further and it's like, well, probably the most influential coaching in our lives is our own internal voice. And yeah. even if it's negative, it's still like a coach. It's like somebody drip feeding a conversation. So ideally, if you're an Olympic athlete, you'll have a coach who goes, you can do it, you know, you're amazing, you know, run faster. Um, but equally, if we have a voice that goes, you're never gonna do this, you're fundamentally shit. <laughs> if we hear that again, again, and again, that is like a coach. It's it's a disempowering coach, but it, it has the same amount of, um, authority and we pay attention to it and because it's inside our head it goes on and on and on but what's interesting of course is we know that you can change those voices because they are yours it's potential to change them and when you think about you know I was talking to somebody who was uh, talking about the lightning press they've done the lightning press and we're going I was getting my head around this whole idea can changing these kind of conversations have an effect on your health and then he thought you know what if I think of some of the conversations I have as like nutritious you know, and some of them as you know rotten food. In, in the same way, if I went to the fridge and in my fridge I've got some rotten old carrots and some you know really nice fresh food. If I eat the rotten carrots, I'm probably physically going to feel ill. You know, if I listen, if I buy into these kind of toxic conversations, that's probably not going to improve my health in any way at all. But if I buy into health giving, nurturing, nutritious conversations, coaching conversations, and maybe it will. So it's about swapping those conversations. And as you say, there's loads of tools out there available to do it. And if not now, when? Yeah. Cool, well I think we've covered loads of really interesting stuff today. So lots to digest and think about. Thanks for uh, raising this um, interesting issue. And we'll see you soon on another podcast. Thanks Kate. Thanks. Bye. Bye. <laughs>